on the last part in the USJ. The trump card of the League of Villains, the Nomu, was easily eradicated by Trunks. Trunks punched the Nomu with such destructive force that Nomu was completely eradicated from existence. A miscalculation on All For One's part. However, this leads to All For One's interest in Trunks. How could a kid be so strong this young? Well, he'll figure it out. So, as All For One's plans continue to change, we move into the UA Sports Festival arc. As usual, President Mike announces the beginning of the UA Sports Festival. And instead of Bakugo coming up to make the speech, Trunks ends up taking up the mantle because he got first for the UA entrance exam. Afterwards, the rounds start to begin, with the first round being the obstacle course as usual. As usual, Midoriya is hyped up, and everyone starts to rush as the round 1 begins. Goten has the ability to fly, and immediately propels himself forward at such immense speed that no one can catch up to him. Trunks is a little bit disadvantaged in this area. This is because he didn't register his quirk as flight, so he's unable to catch up to Goten. However, he still finishes second, just right behind Goten. Meanwhile, the rest of Class 1A continue to make their way through the obstacle course, with Midoriya actually eventually ending up in 3rd place, with Bakugo and Todoroki in 4th and 5th place respectively. With Goten and Trunks in 1st and 2nd place, this leads to Mei Hatsume and Ayama Yuga being eliminated from the tournament as they are not brought over to the 3rd round. The 2nd round now begins with Midoriya teaming up with Uraoka, Golden and Trunks. How will this team fare in the 2nd round of the tournament? Before we begin, one more small change has occurred with Tokoyami replacing Aoyama Yuga on his team. Now with all that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Goten and Trunks on the same team, this round is basically a free pass for Midoriya. So, Uraoka makes everyone weightless and Goten has the ability to fly, so this offers them a lot of mobility. And if anyone comes too close, Midoriya and Trunks are there to intercept them. So, this is basically a wash. So, we just cover the rest of the teams. Bakugo, as usual, gets his headband taken away by Monoma, but eventually ends up taking back the headbands and getting back the points. Meanwhile, Mirror's team just flies around evading everyone's attacks. They, they don't know how to do anything. So, eventually, we have Bakugo's team placing in second place, followed by Todoroki's team placing in third place, and Shinso's team placing in fourth place. So, afterwards, we have the scene where Todoroki talks to Midoriya in private. He recognizes Midoriya's strength and just honestly thinks that Midoriya is like a secret child of all might. So, Bakugo obviously listens in as Todoroki tells Midoriya about his backstory. A very tragic one indeed. Afterwards, we start the third round of the UA Sports Festival, a series of one-on-one -on -one battles. So, with Goten and Trunks in the mix, things are going to change quite drastically here. So, as usual, Oyoma Yuga is replaced by Goten, while Mei Hatsume is replaced by Trunks. So, now we begin the tournament. So, as usual, Midoriya faces off against Shinso right away. Nothing much changes here, so just, let's just get through it real quickly. As usual, Shinso insults the people who dropped out, the people who relinquish their chance at the tournament. And Midoriya is pissed off at Shinso and then eventually succumbs to Shinso's mind control. However, right before Midoriya steps out of the ring, one for all kicks in, allowing Midoriya to break his fingers, unleashing a huge burst of green around the arena. The pain allows Midoriya to snap out of Shinso's mind control. And Midoriya looks back at Shinso gritting his teeth. He wasn't gonna say anything anymore. 
Shinzo's mind control was definitely a very dangerous weapon. However, unlike the original canon events where Midori and Shinzo actually have an exchange, Midori actually has control over one for all at 5% here. So, Shinzo, with his zero physical capabilities, gets completely obliterated by Midoriya as Midoriya sends Shinzo flying out of the ring. Midoriya is the victor of this round. Afterwards, Todoroki beats Sero as usual, causing a huge base yet to be formed in the middle of the arena, causing Sero to be immobilized. Meanwhile, Kirishima manages to beat Tetsu. Then the match between Bakugo and Uraoka begins. Bakugo has much more experience with his quirk here, so Uraoka is completely wiped up by Bakugo immediately. Uraoka didn't have even have a chance to fight back. Now this is where things start changing drastically. Ten year leader faces off against Goten instead of Mei Hatsune. Even though Ten year leader is actually a pretty dominant boss, well we all know how strong Goten is, so Goten immediately knocks the Tenya leader out. Even with his reciprocal burst, Goten was just faster than Tenya leader and superior to him in every regard. Tenya leader knew this, however, he actually expected himself to do better. Though so he was carrying the honorable engineer name. Afterwards, the match between Mina, Ashido, and Trunks begins. Trunks replaces Aima Yuga here. And originally, Mina, Ashido advances to the second round. But as we all know, similar to Goten, Trunks is just too OP and knocks out Mina Ashido immediately. Now, we proceed to the second round of the tournament. The first match is Todoroki vs Midoriya. How will this fight go? Midoriya has control over one for all at 5%, while Todoroki just remains the same. So, will Midoriya be able to pull through or will he lose again? Well, these are questions we'll answer in the next part on My Hero Academia.